Right, here's another side from this uh, lovely set of 12-inch uh, 78 uh, records. It's uh, the British Drama League dialect records, and it's the uh, it's album B, and it says eight English counties. This one's going to be Sussex. I've introduced the uh, that already that label on the previous uh, video, which you'll, you can also look at, just in case you haven't seen it, and. Uh, there we are, look. It's a set of 12 double-sided dialect records. The idea was to, uh, I think, to help actors to uh, improve their knowledge of, of uh, accents and dialects of Britain. So I can remember on the radio a few years ago, he, uh, an actor, he was talking about uh, going to work in Northern Ireland in the 1970s. And he was trying to learn the uh, Irish, uh, uh, not the Irish, the Northern Irish accent. And uh, somebody told him, uh, the best way of remembering it is just say he, he was really struggling you know to get his uh his uh, head around trying to speak like a northern irish person and somebody said to him just say this repeat it after over and over persil automatic you just can't help but say it in a sort of northern irish accent persil automatic <laughs> then you get the northern irish accent and if you work on it a bit you can expand you know on other things but it really works best when you're just saying persil automatic that sounds very northern irish but anyway that's northern ireland this is going to be sussex now my two half late half brothers patrick and uh, and paul sadly gone now they they were born in arundel sussex and uh, they always, uh, I always sort of noticed, uh, certainly in, in the in their later years as I got a bit older, that I could detect a little bit of the kind of uh, country uh, accent, in, you know, country Sussex in their voice. And uh, their uh, father, because they were half brothers, Patrick and Paul, uh, uh, Tom Clark, he, he was uh, my, my mum's first husband. He was a real old country boy, and uh, we called him Snuffy because. Uh, he used to take snuff and it all down his shirt. He was a real dirty old, you know, farm worker. He was a guy who didn't believe in washing, and you know, a bit of a village idiot really. But uh, but he was a real old country boy, and he, he talked like this. He did like that, and he was going out and he was growing his mushrooms. And so here it goes. Let's have a listen to a bit of this old Sussex accent, 1920s style as it is, because uh, that's when it was recorded. So you see, I be right about that there, Mitz. The little gal coming from the school yonder past the fire. Now there she be, going down the road through the red gate on the left-hand side of the way. I say, the silly mare's gone straight up to the door of the wrong house. Foolish child, what be she thinking on? Just where she were very likely chance to find that cantankerous, shriveled, deaf old feller. We all know him well enough, don't we? At the name of Thomas, ain't it? Well, he can avoid the children. One the rough edge of the old chap's tongue soon learn her not to do it again. I lay he's a treasure. Look here, ain't it true? See her tearing off, poor little soul. That's his tune, sure lay. Did you ever see such a sight in the world? Here come the schoolmaster. Ark of the road. I tell you summat I wouldn't tell anybody. There was an old woman lived alone in a cottage in the woods called Old Mother Cornford, and she caused a lot of trouble to the people there. If anybody offended her, she'd cast a spell on his cats and dogs and such like to make them go sick. And she'd wish the people misfortune as well. And they was took bad too. You can be sure the people in those parts was middling careful not to offend her, and they never went nigh the place. Even the baker and the grocer from the town would leave the order outside the garden gate. She's dead now, and it's a middling funny thing. Squire can get no one to live in the old cottage, and there's nothing there now but brambles and nettles. This is a little yarn my grandfather told me years ago about our fire brigade. You see, it was like this year. Soon as we heard it a fire, we tell a cowboy, and he had to nip round to all the firemen's houses. Each house has got a board nailed on the wall with firemen writ on it. Cowboy not first at old Bill Smith. 
Spur's wife thought as how he were silly in summit, as she was middling deaf. Howsomever, when he writ fire on a bit of paper, she said, Bill ain't in, and he want to be home for noon. He's down Sammy's field, spreading. He'll be pretty mad if he misses this fire, like he did last year when they had their pictures took. Well, cowboy rushed off, and out of traps and about, he found Bill. When Bill got home, he found his missus had polished his helmet. And out of changing, he tore off up to the fire station to the side of the town. Because the first man always got five bob. Then one of them had to go down to the George to get the cab horse, which they found had gone to the railway station for some luggage. As old Tom Edward was too eat up with the rheumatiz, the butcher's boy went and fetched him to the fire station. And the old horse looked middling queer out of all that galloping. And when they was all ready and got to the fire, they found another lot had put the fire out. Thought a mussy me captain was mad. Now a little bit of poetry about Sussex by Mus Rudyard Kipling. I'm just in love with all these three, the wheels and the marsh and the down country. No, I don't know which I love the most, the wheels or the marsh or the white chalk coast. I buried my heart in a ferny hill, fixed a little low shawl and a girt high gill. Oh, up by yeller and wood smoke blue. I reckon your keeper middling true. I've loosed my mind far to out and run on a marsh that was old when kings begun. O oh, Romney level and Brens at Reed, I reckon you know what my mind needs. I've given my soul to the south down grass and sheep bells tinkled where you pass. O oh, Fro and Ditchlin and sails at sea, I reckon you keep my soul for me. That was nice, wasn't that, sir? As I say, my two brothers uh, were both born in Arundel in Sussex, a lovely little, little town. And uh, as I say, they always sort of, uh, even though they spent all their life pretty much in London, I can uh, I could detect a little bit of the, uh, especially having met their father later in life, that uh, that uh, they had a bit of that all Sussex country burr about them. You know, it's kind of real country accent, as we call it. This uh, this record was, uh, to show you the, uh, what it was uh, recorded by, it was... Uh, it was, uh, what's his name, R.W. Wyatt of Battle in Sussex, that's the uh, band speaking, real country accent. And uh, from the 1920s, before people were really uh, affected by uh, the mass broadcasting that, uh, you know, we all used to know. We're so exposed to the media that uh, accents have all become jumbled up somewhat, and a lot of regional accents of uh, in England, as well as the rest of the world, have uh, come a little bit more uh, sort of uh, integrated. But... Uh, I'm sure you can still find, if you go to a farm or somewhere out in Sussex, you'll find somebody who speaks uh, quite a bit like uh, R.W. Wyatt. So, thanks for watching. Bye for now.